that indicated that this verdict will be entered. We are not indicating what the verdict is, but this verdict will be entered, and I am going to hand this verdict uh, to the court reporter, uh, Mr. Bloom, and I'm going to ask him if he would seal this verdict. Mr. Bloom, will you do that? Is there a possibility that after an additional period of time, today or even tomorrow, that you may reach a unanimous verdict on the remaining counts other than count six? Okay. Very well. Um, what we will do now, I understand that. Um, what we will do now is I will ask Mr. Tidd, our clerk, to read the verdict which, is, uh, which you previously rendered, and you were told on that. And I'll ask uh, Harlow, uh, Mr. Bloom, if you'll hand the, uh, open that envelope and hand the verdict to Mr. Tidd, who then will read the verdict. It's, uh, it's been previously added, but he'll again read the verdict. Wow. Okay. 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 Please the court, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will now hear your verdict read as this court will order it recorded. Verdict, count number six. We, the jury, in the issue joint, find the defendant, Tracy Hunter, guilty of having unlawful interest in a public contract, RC 2921.42A1, as charged in count number six of the indictment. Okay, thank you very much. And Harlow, uh, this verdict has been uh, previously entered, but we'll give that to you uh, to enter that as part of the record. Okay. Uh, very well, ladies and gentlemen, um, that will end your service in this case. And I just might tell you that you were absolutely super. I realize that you could not agree on the remaining counts, but you did agree on one count for which we thank you. Uh, you were absolutely super. You showed up all the time. We weren't always timely, but you folks were. You did a, you, you spent six weeks of your life and you deliberated. Uh, oh, excuse me, I should say, um, I should, um, I should say you have considered this case for a considerable length of time. The court, uh, uh, the court accepts um, your response, but you are unable to reach a verdict on the remaining counts other than six. The court uh, accepts this conclusion and finds that there is no uh, probability of, of the jury agreeing. So that will, that will end your service. Um, we do thank you. You are absolutely super. Uh, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I know the parties thank you too. So you're excused now. The so I like to the jury. The jury has already been polled, so they were previously polled, and that's it. So they were they were polled. They were polled last Friday. No, they 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 were polled, and they were asked whether count six was their true and, and verdict, and they all indicated yes. So it's over, and I indicated that. Okay, folks, you're excused with the thanks for the support. All right, so um, tell us the breaking news. Uh, what's the reason for the big press conference? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for having me on your show and giving me an opportunity to share this information with the public. Um, basically, what I will do is tell you what the development was with respect to the jury, particularly two jurors. Uh, secondly, I'll tell you what the legal consequences are, what the legal meaning is of that, uh, of that development. And then third, I'll tell you what we, Judge Hunter and I, plan to do with respect to the development. And fourthly, I'll tell you what should happen. So, uh, firstly, um, after the jury announced its verdict on October 14th uh, of this month, um, I was contacted uh, later uh, that evening uh, by one of the jurors. And the juror advised me that she had a problem with her verdict. And her verdict of guilty to count six of the indictment was, in fact, not her verdict. Uh, she also advised that there were two other individuals on the jury who would also attest to the fact that that was not their verdict. Uh, the guilty finding with respect to count six was not that was not their verdict, and they did not think that that uh, charge even applied to the facts, the information, the evidence, the circumstances that were presented uh, at trial. Uh, I was um, real pleased to hear that information, but I also thought that by me being involved in the case as Judge Hunter's attorney, it would be more appropriate in order to avoid the appearance of impropriety and the appearance of undue influence 
to uh, have that juror and the other jurors share that information with an independent, objective uh, attorney, separate and independent of me, separate and independent of the case, separate and independent of Judge Hunter, someone not affiliated with Judge Hunter or the case. And that happened over a matter of two or three days last week. Okay. And after the independent attorneys gave them uh, the okay to speak with me, we reconnected as far as communication and as far as the issue of what their true and accurate verdict was. And after I spoke with them again at length, I learned that not only was that not their true uh, and accurate verdict, uh, but that there was um, some pressure, some uh, coercion uh, by other members of the jury to get them to um, at least agree, or not necessarily agree, but at least uh, sign a verdict with respect to one of the uh, one of the charges, which in fact, based on my communications with them, was not their position. Um, so the verdict was signed. Um, amazingly, uh, one of the jurors told me that they would seek relief from their verdict when they were polled and knew enough about the law to know that in fact they would be polled about their verdict. Mm -hmm. As you recall, um, on Friday, uh, there was a unanimous verdict with respect to count six of the indictment but the other eight charges in the indictment, the jury did not make a decision or had not had a decision uh, by Friday. So the uh, verdict in count six uh, was sealed. For a layperson, that means you don't disclose what the verdict is. You literally seal it in an, in, 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 in an envelope, and that is what happened. Uh, thereafter, uh, Judge Norbert Nadel um, attempted to poll the jury or questioned the jury about uh, the sealed verdict without actually mentioning what the uh, verdict was. And he asked each juror, 1 through 12, uh, is this your verdict, without actually announcing what the verdict was. And uh, all the jurors uh, uh, gesticulated that, in fact, that, that that was their verdict. They nodded affirmatively. I think some may have spoken out. That was Friday. Uh, Tuesday came along. Uh, Monday, we were off because of a holiday. The jury uh, re-deliberated, uh, commenced deliberations again on, um, on Tuesday. And uh, Ultimately, about three or four hours later, the jury came to the decision that, you know, we're deadlocked. We're deadlocked with respect to the eight counts. Uh, we can't make a decision. It would be useless to continue to uh, deliberate. So a mistrial was declared with respect to the eight counts. The one count, which uh, was count six, was um, unsealed. And the clerk of court uh, announced in open court the uh, verdict, and the verdict was guilty to count six. Uh, after the verdict was announced, uh, I attempted to... Um, poll the jury, which as a matter of law, Rule 31, in, in the, the common law here in Ohio, I'm allowed to do, and I believe the judge is required to allow me uh, to poll the jury. Mm -hmm. So I specifically stood up and asked to poll the jury, and the judge would not allow me to poll uh, the jury. Um, and um, the guilty verdict uh, stood thereafter, and I believe the, the, uh, the jury was discharged. So the development is, is that you've got two jurors who say that guilty to count six is not my verdict. It is not a true and accurate representation of my verdict, firstly. Secondly, if I would have been polled, uh, I would have let the world know that that was not my verdict. And by way of background, legally, let me explain that that is the purpose of polling a jury in open court, is to give jurors an opportunity to be yeah. away from the pressure cooker, mm -hmm. the jury room, and other jurors so that you can independently, in open court, and for, for the defendant also, and the public to see what your actual verdict is, and that it is free and independent of threat, coercion, uh, pressure, and so forth. That's the purpose of polling. That did not happen um, in this case. So that is the development. Uh, two affidavits were sworn out under oath by those two jurors, and that is the development with respect to what happened in the jury. So, legally... Secondly, what does that mean? Well, what it means is this. In Ohio, you do not have a final verdict, and your verdict is not complete uh, until the jury is polled and until the verdict is entered of record. In this case, there was no polling of the jury because I was not given an opportunity to question them about what their verdict was after their verdict was announced. So legally, uh, the verdict is not complete. And since the jury has been discharged, there should be a declaration of a mistrial, or a new trial should be granted with respect to count six. 
What does the law say? Um, the law clearly says that um, in order for a verdict to be final, number one, the jury has to declare that the deliberations are over. That was done in this case. The jury said, hey, we makes no sense to deliberate any further. Um, so that was one aspect of a final verdict being accomplished. The second element is that the verdict must be published. And the verdict was published on Tuesday, October 14th. Then the third thing is, if there's a request, the law requires that the jury must be polled. That did not happen on October 14th. The fact that there was an attempt to poll the jury uh, without the verdict being publicized on Friday the 10th, that does not constitute polling jury as a matter of law. So what you have is a request that was denied to poll the jury after the verdict was announced. And that didn't happen. So the verdict is not a final verdict. And since the jury has been discharged, um, there must be a declaration of a, of a mistrial. And there must be a new trial to count six of the indictment because count six, as a matter of law, cannot stand. So that is the law. Uh, that is the significance of the development. So thirdly, what do we do? What do we? When I say we, I'm speaking of me and the Honorable Judge uh, Tracy Marie Hunter. What do we do? Uh, we have filed uh, a motion for a new trial based on the court's failure to poll, or failure to allow me to poll the jurors after the announcement uh, publicly uh, in court. And that motion uh, was filed uh, not too long ago in the Hampton County Court of Common Pleas, and it sets forth uh, persuasive binding law from the Ohio Rules of Criminal Procedure, particularly Rule 31, and it also sets forth um, clear and unequivocal Ohio Supreme Court cases where the Ohio Supreme Court has said uh, that the three things that I mentioned before must occur before a verdict is final. Um, I believe um, the next step, I'm, I'm sorry, we, we filed the motion, there's going to be a hearing on the motion, November 13th, uh, 2014, uh, next month before the Honorable Judge Norbert NATO, where we will have an opportunity. The hearing is before NATO. Yes, it is before okay. NATO at this time. It's scheduled before Judge NATO. Right now, this case is within the province of, of Judge NATO. Uh, so I have to follow legal procedures. No other judge has um, the authority to control anything in this case at this point. So um, George Nor Norbert Nato is assigned this case, and that's where the motion for new trial was filed. And that is where, uh, to date, the hearing on the motion for new trial will uh, take place. So at the trial, we will make the arguments and may include uh, uh, additional evidence uh, of our position. And um, I believe uh, that Judge uh, Nato will... Um, follow the law and do the right thing and declare a mistrial. That's where we are. 